The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, today. I write a column full of news and I've a scoop for you. For better taste, smoke Lucky Strike, they're mild and mellow too. You bet. Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. I sell cigarettes all day and this is what I hear. Most Luckies sure have better taste, they bring you smoking cheer. And you'll agree, Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, there's a truly enjoyable difference in Luckies. For Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. And here's the reason. Fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you the full enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for a smooth, mellow, far better tasting cigarette, switch to Lucky Strike. Puff after puff, pack after pack, you'll get complete smoking enjoyment. You'll agree, Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Try a carton soon. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. <laughs> Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our final broadcast of the season. And as you know, farewells are always sad. And doing the final program is always sad. So without further ado, we bring you radio's saddest comedian, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you're right, I am sad, very sad. As a matter of fact, last year on my closing program, I broke down and cried. I remember that, Jack. It was pitiful the way you sobbed through the entire broadcast. And as we went into the final commercial, I thought your little heart would break. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the sponsor waiting that long to pick up your option. <laughs> Two more minutes and I'd have been a bum. <laughs> Me and Bing. <laughs> Anyway, Don. <coughs> My darling daughter, Mary. Huh? Mary, what are you doing? I'm reading Mama's letter. What? I was supposed to read it on the program last week, but I never got a chance. Everybody kept interrupting me. Oh, well, go ahead. Read it now, Mary. <coughs> My darling daughter, Mary. Now, hold it, Mary. Come in. Phil, what are you doing here, Jackson? What am I doing here? This is our last show of the season. I thought we did that last week. <laughs> last week? Sure, I came down to see Guy Lombardo. <laughs> but Phil, he doesn't start until next week. Hmm? Oh, sorry, that was Mary's line. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary, you take that. No, Mary, I, I'm sorry, I took away your line. You read it, Mary. I like the way you read it. No, no, you read it. No, no, let's take our line. You read it. Go ahead. But, Phil, he doesn't start until next week. No, you read it, Jack. <laughs> but, Phil, Phil, he doesn't start until next week. Thank you. Now, who's going to get the other one? <laughs> anyway, what do you want to see Guy Lombardo for? Well, I promised I'd teach Carmen the lyrics to That's What I Like About the Sound. <laughs> But, Phil, he's only going to be on for 14 weeks. He'll never have time to sing all the choruses. Well, believe me, I'm glad, Jackson. Imagine my song finishing like this. 
She's got backbones and butter beans, them ham hocks and turnip greens. You and me in New Orleans, and that's what I like about the South. Mm, South, mm, mm, about the South. Mm. <laughs> Look, Phil. Phil, since Guy Lombardo is going to be my summer replacement, tell your boys to clear their music racks. And tell Bagby that this summer he'll have to rent a room, so he better take his blankets out of the piano. <laughs> And as far as you, Phil, as far as you're concerned, I wish you'd use this vacation to get a good rest so you can come back in the fall ready to go. You know what I mean, Phil. Abstain a little, you know? Well, you're late with that, Jackson. I ain't had a drink in two weeks. Not since Remley had his accident. Remley had an accident? What happened to him? Oh, it was horrible, Jackson. Ghastly. Oh. He was carrying a bowl full of goldfish when somebody yelled, Bottoms up. <laughs> You mean... Yep, drained it, sand and all. <laughs> Gee, Phil, I'm sorry to hear that about Frank. He must have been awful. Well, he didn't mind the fish or the sand, but that turtle went down slow and took out his tonsil. <laughs> well, how do you like that? <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Go ahead and read your mother's letter. I want to hear about your sister, babe. Okay. My darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to tell you that the whole family came over to our house and watched you on television. Well. You look so beautiful that your Uncle Lou is now putting your picture on $10 bills. <laughs> Uncle Lou? Uncle Lou. Oh. It was one of the best television shows we ever saw, and the reception was fine, except that during the middle of the program, there was a lot of static from an electric razor. So he complained to your father, and he made Babe stop. <laughs> oh, good, good. By the way, Babe was on television last week, too, but not as long as she expected. She only lasted three rounds. <laughs> <laughs> no other news, so we're closed now. Your loving mother, just plain Bill. <laughs> she has to be funny right to the last line, isn't she? Well, now, kids, because this is the last show of the season, I think we should start handing out a little credit to the people behind the scenes. I think so, too, Jack. So at this point, I want to introduce various members of our staff, those who are unseen and unheard. And unpaid. <laughs> Phil, that was unfunny. No. Anyway, ladies... Gee, I certainly gave myself a great line there, didn't I? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce the man who writes and arranges all the singing commercials for our quartet, Mr. Malin Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, Malin, what song is the Sportsman Quartet going to do? Well, Jack, the sportsmen can't be with us today. They're appearing at the Bella Reeve Hotel in Kansas City. Oh, yes. Well, Malin, what about our commercial? Well, I've written one for you, Mary, Phil, and Don. Oh. And, Jack, I hope you won't mind, but I wrote in a little part for myself. Well, good, good. Now, here are your parts. <laughs> Gee. Don, you go first. Okay. I've been with Benny now from 34 to 51. By saving every dime I made, I'm back where I've begun. Oh, be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Poodly poo 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 poo. I've got some news about my sister you'll be glad to hear. She's working in Kentucky, a tobacco auction. Oh! Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy. Go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Poodly poo 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 poo. <laughs> Jackson always says my band is lousy as can be, but we'll be back next year with Jack and LSMFT. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Be poodly poo 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 poo. <laughs> I don't care what Harris says or Don and Mary, too. 
CBS has color now to show my eyes are blue. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike, go lucky. That was really a clever number, Malin. How long have you studied music? Oh, I've never studied music, Jack. <laughs> well, then where did you get the experience to make arrangements for Phil Harris's orchestra? I used to work in a boiler factory. <laughs> oh. Every summer I go there for a rest. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Hmm? And now to get on with the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present Artie Auerbach, who plays the part of Mr. Kitzel. Mr. Kitzel, are you here? <laughs> well, Mr. Kitzel, now that we're going off the air, what are you going to do this summer? I'm going to Houston, Texas to visit my cousin. Oh, you, you have a cousin in Houston? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Glenn McCarthy. <laughs> Glenn McCarthy, the one who owns the Shamrock Hotel? Yes, the Shamrock. I named it myself. <laughs> I didn't know that. Tell me, Mr. Kitzel, how are you and McCarthy related? Believe me, it's a long story. <laughs> what? The synopsis alone could be your summer replacement. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you have a nice summer, Mr. Kitzel, and we'll see you in the fall. Thank you. Well, happy vacation, Mr. Benny. You too, Miss Livingston. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Mr. Kitzel. When it's roundup time in Texas, Mrs. Bloom is on the stage. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce another talented actor named Joe Kearns. You know him as Ed, the man who guards my underground vault. He's been there for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, I think I'll go down to my vault and see how he is. Password. Old soldiers never die. <laughs> oh, it's you, General Benny. <laughs> yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, besides being the keeper of my vault, Mr. Kearns also played the part of Joseph Collins, the man sent over by the Department of Internal Revenue when they thought I wasn't deducting enough for entertainment on my income tax. Remember when he said... Now, Mr. Benny, believe me, we're trying to help you. I know, I know. <laughs> That's why the government sent me and my assistant to see you. Oh, you remember my assistant, Herbert Thompson? Yes, yes. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> hmm. Mr. Benny, we still can't see how a man who earned all the money you did last year only spent $17 on entertainment. But that's all I spent, and I listed every penny of it. We know, we know. <laughs> and as far as my tax return is concerned, I put down every cent of income. Why, I even listed the $3.75 I earned on New Year's Eve. Uh, yes, Mr. Benny, but you neglected to put down how you earned that $3.75, so I filled that in myself. Well, that was nice. Uh, wait a minute. How did you know how I earned that money? Well, don't you remember? It was my baby you sat with. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. 
folks, the man playing Herbert Thompson is another fine actor named Will Wright. <laughs> Goodbye, Will. How do you do? Don't milk it! <laughs> and now, folks, another actor whose appearance on this program is always greeted with laughter. Because he's one hey, of the... Bun. Bud. Uh-huh? Come here a minute. Who, me? Yeah. What do you want? What actor are you going to introduce now? Frank Nelson. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Introduce Sheldon Leonard. Well, why should I introduce Sheldon Leonard now? Because that's me, and I just laid six to five. I'd come in ahead of Nelson. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the man who plays the part of our tout, Sheldon Leonard. And now, Mr. Leonard, will it be all right if I introduce Frank Nelson? Okay, it's your show. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. At this moment, folks, at this moment, I'd like to present Frank Nelson. Let's see, where is he? Oh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> Are you, are you Frank Nelson, the radio actor? I've got two kids who think I'm funnier than you are. <laughs> All right, I just want people to meet you. But you know, Frank, it's strange. Whenever I run into you on my program, you're always so antagonistic toward me. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, Frank, that's just on the program. But in real life, do you really hate me? Ooh, no <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, lots of times when the scene of my program is in my home, I try to relax by listening to the radio. And there's one girl named Blanche Stewart who really drives me nuts whenever she sings. I'll see if I can tune her in right now. On top of old Smokey, another bit snow. I lost my true lover for courting so slow. For courting so pleasure and courting his green. That's enough. Turn it off, Bill. Oh, she's good. He's worse than a thief. Never mind. I'll, I'll turn it off myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a radio program is only as funny as the writers make it. And I happen to be fortunate enough to have four of the greatest, most talented, most original, most versatile writers in the entire industry. Mary, introduce my writers. Well, why don't you introduce them? Every time I look at them, I get sick. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. My writers are Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, and John Tackaberry. And now, next, I'd like to introduce... Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. Aren't your writers going to come out and say something? No, Mary. They can write, but they can't read. <laughs> How they do it, I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, working in close cooperation with me and the writers is our little script girl, Jeanette Iman. 
Hello, Jeanette. Hello, Blue Eyes. I'm going to miss you this summer. <laughs> She can't type, but she's a good secretary. <laughs> you know, folks, all the people I introduced here tonight will be with us again next season, as well as my regular cast. Me too, Mr. Benny? Yes, you too, Dennis. And don't do anything silly right now, because I was just going to talk about you. Oh, you were? Yeah. I was going to say that you're talented, clever, versatile... And you're looked up to as one of the finest personalities in radio. And you know what that means coming from me. Yeah, when you're all washed up, you want me to give you a job. <laughs> hmm. Look, Dennis, it's time for your number. What's it going to be? Too young. Thanks. It's not about you. Oh, all right. Sing, sing it anyway. sung by Dennis Day. And darn good, too. Hmm. <laughs> Dennis, come here a minute. Yes, sir. How many children in your family? Only two. Me and my older brother. You've met him. Oh, yes. He would have made a wonderful only child. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, there are two telephone... 
<laughs> there are two telephone operators on my program whom you've enjoyed many times. B. Benadared, who plays the part of Gertrude, and Sarah Burner, who plays the part of Mabel. Jack, I don't see the girls around. You don't? Well, then maybe they're still at the switchboard. I'm doing Fred Allen now. I just wanted to know that. I'll pick up the phone and find out. Oh, Mabel, what is it, guys? <laughs> Mr. Benny's loin is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what the brave bull wants now. <laughs> I have a cold. You answer it. Let him wait. I had a date with him last week to go to the movies, and he kept me waiting two hours. I'd have got awfully tired if I wasn't sitting down. <laughs> sitting down? Yeah. When Benny takes you to the movies, he meets you inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. He's a slick one. <laughs> Once he took me up on Mulholland Drive, shut off the motor, and then he said, You know, honey, my back itches. Would you mind rubbing it for me? So... Then he said, I want to take my shirt off. Would you mind closing your eyes? All right, so you closed your eyes and rubbed his back. Rubbed his back? Nothing. When I got through, I found out I simonized his car. That's how I thought it cold. Operator. Operator. Perfect. Hey. Folks, I really did want you to meet him, but I guess the switchboard is busy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce one of the most versatile actors in radio, Mel Blanc. As you may or may not know, Mel plays several parts on my program. For instance, when I come downstairs in the morning and walk into my den, he looks at me and says, Oh, hello, Polly. Hello. Many times, the Polly had to listen to me take my violin lesson. But Polly never complained because she knew my French violin teacher was also Mel Blanc. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. How many times must I tell you it is not? Da, 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 da. You must slide. Da, da, da. Then every once in a while on my travels, I have to take a train. And at the railroad station, again, you hear Mel Blanc. Train leaving on track five at four and I'm. Azusa and Coop. Then sometimes I have to... Bunga. <laughs> yes. Then sometimes I decide not to take the train and go by automobile. And when I get in my car and step on the starter, do you hear the motor? No, you always hear Mel Blanc. Now, Mel, how about saying hello to the folks in your natural voice? Uh, we, 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 well, I think it's, it's, it's hot in. That is dark, I... I mean, I want to... Uh... Well, you know where I am. And so that's how I... Mel, Mel, what's the matter? Huh? <laughs> hey, I forgot what my own voice is like. <laughs> you forgot your own voice? Well, that's silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mel, all of you. <laughs> well, folks, the program is almost over, and it looks as though we brought everybody on for an introduction, excepting... What was that? Oh, yes, I almost forgot our sound men. Gene Twombly and Cliff Northness. And now, fellas, as I look... As I look in the glass-enclosed control room where engineer George Foster feeds this program to the network... I see my producer, Hilliard Marks, making frantic notions, motions, that we, um... Uh... <laughs> if Mary can make a mistake, I can make a mistake. <laughs> making motions that we should speed it up. So, sound men, please ring the phone. Thank you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Barry, this is Rochester. Oh, hello, Rochester. Have you got my car ready for my trip to New York? Almost, boss. I'm looking for a piece of cheesecloth so I can strain the oil into the crankcase. <laughs> but, Rochester, the last time you poured the oil right out of the can. You didn't bother to strain it. I know, and when you drove away, the exhaust pipe kept spitting sardines. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember. Well, so long, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Well, never mind. Forget it. No, no, what is it, Rochester? Well, when you go to Korea, aren't you leaving from the West Coast? 
Uh-huh. Then why are you making such a long trip to New York first? I want to do a little shopping at Macy's and Gimbel. <laughs> Rochester. Haven't you got something funny to say about that? Well, I have, boss, but this is the final program of the season, and I'd like you to have the last laugh. Well, thank you, Rochester. Goodbye. Goodbye. Back, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... My bride and I will live a life as happy as can be For we agree on Lucky Strike Coast LSMFT And you'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette As soon as Bowser said we're wet and start our honeymoon Our bags are filled with Lucky Strikes to last the month of June Honestly, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today Friends, if you're looking for complete smoking enjoyment, switch to Lucky Strike. Because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, Lucky's are smoother, milder, far better tasting than any other cigarette you've ever put a match to. You see, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you better taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for everything you want in your cigarette, be happy, go Lucky. You'll find Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Make your next carton, Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Good night, everybody, from all of us. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at the same time when Lucky Strike will bring you Guy Lombardo time. Next week's show will come to you from Mitchell Field, Long Island, and will feature Mindy Carson as a special guest. Jack Benny Show is heard by Armed Forces Overseas for the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.